Hi and welcome back to another video. I'm sure you've been looking forward to a video on the kitchen cabinet. So today I'm going to be talking about the kitchen cabinet. Now talking about a kitchen cabinet, I already had in mind um, the design or what I wanted. However, I didn't know which material was going to be best to go with. So I had to inquire from my brother who is a carpenter. Um, the various ma uh, materials available there and which one would be you know good to go with as well as you know in terms of affordability so the options were between an MDF a chipboard and then plywood another plywood um, that's a three-quarter plywood and looking at the MDF um, I stood or what I've learned about it so far is that it doesn't do so well with you know water especially coming in contact with water that is if the edges are not secured properly and then water gets into it then it becomes um, it begins you know moving apart or peeling off the same for chipboard however comparing chipboard and then MDF chipboard seems to be a little bit stronger or durable compared to that of MDF so I decided to just you know write these off my options like at a very first um, point for the ground um, cabinet and then I was looking at the option with um, that is a plywood also with a plywood because it doesn't have a smooth finishing or surface it means that you either have to spray it you have to paint it or apply uh, a, PV, a PVC veneer to it so with that also uh, I was looking at the cost that was going to go into it, but it turned out that that was going to be a little bit more cost efficient compared to the other two. So I decided to go with the uh, plywood. Now um, for the cabinet, since I already had the design or plan in mind, I explained that to my brother. I went out to draw it out. I was going to have five drawers, that is for the ground one, and then three, sorry, five doors and then three drawers. So we went out to measure it out, making sure we are leaving space or making room for the um, cooker. So um, once we had the layout of it, we went ahead to do the measurement of it. The reason why we had to get a measurement was that uh, ideally, when you're purchasing the plywood, you have to purchase a ticket, a carpentry shop, and then you go ahead to you know, do the um, cutting and the rest. But in, going with that, we, we, had a, we rather thought of uh, buying it, um, that is a timber market, having it cut over there, transport them here, and then do everything over here so that we don't have like a cabinet which is completed and you have to go get a car or a cargo truck to transport it here so that's what we did we got a wood three of it that's a uh, plywood three quarter plywood at uh, timber market we got it from a company called um, a sojourn company limited so we got three pieces of that now also when purchasing a plywood it is very important to either have somebody who knows more about plywood or a carpenter with you to be able to select very good ones, especially for the purpose that it's going to be used for. So in our case, it took us some time to you know get good ones because most of the time when you're buying from them, they're interested in just selling off whatever is there. So if you don't take care, they're going to be giving plywood, which is not so good. And that was the first, um, the first selection that they gave us wasn't so good. So we went I to go to a couple of them before we landed on what we were going to, you know, what was good to use for what um, we wanted to use them for. So we got three pieces of them. We took them to the machine shop, which is also around the timber market. We had them cut to the various sizes that we had. That is for the drawers, the doors, the, the, um, the div dividers and everything. And then after that, I was able to transport them here with my small car. So you saw, like you see the um, advantage of that, having everything cut, you know, brings the size to you know, smaller sizes. So you're able to pack them into a smaller car. So that was what I did. Then I transported them here. Now during the day that the work was supposed to start on it, we had to go through a couple of or series of processes before you know getting to the final finish. The first one of them was to spray them all with um, dust band, which is a chemical that prevents termites. So we sprayed that as a boot front and back of all the plywoods, uh, waited for them to dry, and then after that we went I to sandpaper them uh, before applying the PVC veneer. So. With regard to the finishing, we went with PVC veneer, uh, which comes in different colors, um, as well as different you know, yards, you know, yes, sizes. So we purchased 20 yards of that. Um, the color we went with is what you see in the video. And my brother went out to apply them to all the woods, that is the front and back, the edges, yes, all the parts of the wood, depending on where they are going to be fitted. So especially for the doors, you need it for all the parts, that is the front and back, 
and then all the edges now for the ones that are you know being positioned into the cabinet itself some parts will you know the back you don't need to have it there because there's plug which is going to be there yeah so we went ahead to apply the um, PVC veneer on the plywood and then after that um, went I to screw them together to form the actual cabinet so since my brother is in a carpenter he, he was you know the one doing that and I was just assisting him that too went I to screw all the parts together then after that you know applied plywood to the back of the um, cabinet you know to prevent it from having direct contact with the wall so after doing all that um, there was a need to install the the doors, the drawers, and then handles, and then the hinges, and and so on. So we went out to install the doors. That's five doors and then three drawers. Um, so for the doors, went out to do that as well as for the um, the drawers, went out to do that. And then also install the handles for them. And then also it comes to the worktop. Now with regard to the worktop, also there are a lot of options, or there are different options that you can select from for the worktop. Uh, each and every one of them, you know, have got their advantages as well as their disadvantages and as well as our as part of the advantages or disadvantages will have to do with cost. So in my case, I was looking for something which is going to be able to last for a long time as part of it lasting also to be easily transported here without getting damaged. So there was an option to choose between either a granite or a marble. Now, according to my brother who has worked with most of these things for a long time, uh, he did advise or suggest that uh, it's good I go with uh, granite as compared to that of marble. Now the price difference between the two wasn't so much wide, it was like about 100 and something cities different. Um, the granite was going for 1600 and then the marble was going for I think 1400 and something cities or 500 and something cities for that. So I decided I was going to go with um, the granite. So. Um, I'm able to transport it here as well with my car. Now the total length of the granite is nine feet. That's what we like what we where we purchased from. That is from the Sujaman Company Limited. And I wasn't able to, I wasn't going to be able to transport the entire nine feet with my car here. So we had to cut them to the exact size that we needed for the kitchen cabinet. That is a down part too. It was a little over six feet, which is almost closer to seven feet. So um, went I to have that, you know, I think it was almost seven feet here. Went I to have the granite cut, I went uh, with my grinding machine, so we just changed the disc of it and then um, had a cut that is at Timber Market. So we're fortunate to have gotten power there. And then after that, I was able to fit it in my car and then transport it here with the help of my brother. So it didn't get damaged, like I was very glad it didn't get damaged. Um, and we go here, went I to apply. So doing the application, we had to install silicone around the edges of the cabinet, place the, um, the granite on top of it, apply a little bit of pressure, and then went I to also apply the, is it a corner, is it a corner mode? The side here, the one that goes to the side. So, so we did apply all, um, um, install all that with the help of uh, silicone. So after that, and we had to go ahead to also install the sink as part of it. So we also use silicone in the application of that. So basically that was what went into the ground um, cabinet. Now for the top one, because there wasn't going to be so much activities, especially with water, I decided I was going to go with chipboard uh, with that. So we just purchased one chipboard, had a cut there as well, brought it here, screw them together. So, you know, before you even screw them, you have to secure the edges there's like a, uh, sort of a veneer that secures the edges and then after that screw them together and then had it fixed on the um, the wall for that we created three doors for it so two doors you know bigger space and then a shelf and then one door with also a shelf over there and then went tight to apply it or install it on the wall now during the installation we decided to keep um, a bit from the ground to the top of our seven feet space before applying that because um, where it was going to be if they are going to be cooking with the cooker, you need to stand underneath it and you don't want a situation where your head is going to be bumping into the top um, shelf. So that was how we went about um, that. And then the space we left for the cooker was like about 13 something, I think about 30 inches or so. And then the cooker fits in very well there with even spaces at the side. So it's not like in a tight space. Now um, you could see from some of my videos that there's a fridge also there. Now that space, uh, we decided to keep the fridge there so we are able to create enough you know, room 
or space in the kitchen because not so much of a bigger kitchen also we're looking at a situation whereby especially my wife will be doing a lot of cooking there wouldn't find herself in a very tight um, space and so far it's been great we've been doing a lot of cooking here and she's not complaining like she's able to you know move about do all that she has to do uh, within that space having a fridge behind her like a little bit of space and then they cook in front of her and then have a lot of space to you know do other things so basically these are the things that has gone into the installation of the kitchen cabinet now the total cost of the kitchen cabinet was 3557 cities now this includes the wood that was purchased the uh, granite that was for the worktop the rails, the handles, the PVC veneer, the hinges, the um, chipboard, and all the things that were used for the um, cabinet. So basically, these are material costs. I didn't have to pay anything for um, workmanship. So because yeah, yeah my brother that uh, was you know kind enough to do them for me for free. So basically, the total cost that went into the kitchen cabinet. Was, uh, 3557 also did include the sink as well as the tap for the sink and all the accessories that comes it comes with so basically that is just about it with regard to the cost so for the entire kitchen cabinet what we needed was wood that was plywood three quarter plywood we also had to purchase screws for the hinges we also had to purchase hinges the handles Aside from that, we had to purchase the PVC veneer, which was 20 yards. It comes in a row. We purchased um, that. We purchased a chipboard, which was cut to the various sizes to make the, um, that is the top cabinet. And I think basically these are the things that we, yeah, we also got drawer um, rails, which are you were used for the drawers. And I think that was, and then dust band chemical, which was used to spray the wood to prevent termites from, you know, um, feasting or feeding on the wood so basically that's just about it now doing the installation it didn't take so much um, time um, the putting a down cabinet together just to get it to do that that is going through the spraying the sandpapering so I did sandpapering uh, or I did sandpaper the wood before we went out to install them so yeah just you might be wondering how I went about to do that with that power. Yes, yeah, so the solar was able to power the device. That that's a grinding machine, which we changed the decks. So I went out to some paper or the uh, plywood. That is, some of them will require me to do front and back, and then the edges. Some was just front and back. So I went out to do all that, and then my brother went out to apply the PVC veneer to them, and went out to screw them together to make the cabinet. Now also not forgetting the bathroom cabinet it was just basically the same thing, and for the worktop. For that as well we also use granite for that but i was a different uh, it has this shiny particle so my brother had that um there uh, he wasn't using so he just decided to install it for me so these are things that uh has gone into the cabinet installation so far uh it's not it hasn't been anything like you know, so much serious work where you need to spray you need to you know it's just pvc veneer which the finishing looks really good one cool thing about it is that once it gets dirty you can just wash it with water and you're good to go and if it's begin peeling off you can just install new pvc veneer and that's also uh yeah so that is basically just about it for this video in case you're new to this channel and you haven't subscribed yet kindly go ahead and hit on the subscribe button don't forget to hit on the bell so that anytime there's a new video you get to see it but before i even end this video there's one important thing i need to talk about which has to do with the base of the cabinet you notice that after having the the, the um, stands for it there's a space there ideally there's a plate that is used to cover there so you don't really see the uh, base of it uh, we decided not to go with that because once you have the plate, there's a lot of dust that goes underneath it and you're not able to clean it if you're not able to take off the plate. So we decided to just leave it like that so that whenever we are cleaning, you're able to clean the base of it. And I must say it looks like it looks cool. It doesn't really look any form of like awkward. So that's how come we decide to keep the base the way it is without putting the plate um, there. So that is just about it for this video in case there's anything i haven't touched on maybe i'm talking about in this video you can just draw my attention to it in the comment section and then i'll do well to make a video on that too i'll see you in the next one